Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to chapel today, a special day in chapel. Uh, I am Luke Allen. You might have seen me yesterday preaching. Um, I am also the class president of the fall 2022 graduating class here at BCF and uh, probably the last graduating class of BCF, if, I'm, if I think, I don't know. All right, well, <laughs> there's one more. Uh, but I am honored and I am proud to introduce our graduating class of fall 2022. And uh, I am proud to be a part of Dr. Kinchin's last uh, semester graduating class as he is our president. And I could not be more honored to be the class president of the class. I'm very thankful for the leadership and for all my professors that have guided us um, throughout learning uh, what we needed to know. And especially in my preaching classes, they have aided me very well in learning uh, how to speak properly and how to exegete the word properly. And most of all, they have helped me grow in my relationship with God daily. And I'm very thankful for that. Um, so I am proud to introduce the uh, graduating class of fall 2022. Thank you for being here. If y'all would, please stand and worship with us.
may be seated. My name is Dylan Gary. I am the vice president for the fall class of 2022. And it is my privilege uh, to present the class project to Dr. Kenton today. Uh, for our class project, we have decided um, to make it our goal to build a fire pit that has a detachable grill for students to be able to just hang around and also cook food on. And so with that being said, we would like to present to you, Dr. Kinchin, a token to remember our class by. Um, and for that, we have gotten you the ingredients to make uh -oh. s'mores so that you can come visit us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You can look at me and tell I need this. Uh, in fact, when we came up on the uh, platform, I uh, almost hit Dr. Jumper with my cane. He steps up, you know, just doesn't even use the stairs. And I'm thinking to myself, when I first got here, I used to do that. And this little voice came up and says, you lied? You lied? Those little short, stubby legs never would have done that. And now this... Thank you so much. I will tell folks my last class present was the most fulfilling one that I ever received. Thank you all so much. God bless you, and God bless you with what you're going to do for him in the years that are lying ahead. Good morning. I'm Dr. Jumper, the academic dean. On behalf of the academic office, we give congratulations to all of our uh, graduates. But today we want to honor two different sets of the graduates with uh, certain academic um, matters that we want to give to them. First, we want to present honor stoles to those graduates who have obtained a career GPA of 3.25 or higher. Students, would you proceed to Dr. Kenton when I call your name, please? Luke Allen. <clears throat> Taylor Donaldson. <clears throat> Violet Knight. Jocental Pantlets. <clears throat> Schuyler Shipes. <clears throat> and Angel Smith. Also, we have certificates for those students who have obtained the highest GPA in their respective majors. These are the ones who are present with us today. For the Bachelor of Arts in English, Jocental Pantslets. Bachelor of Arts in Ministry Studies, Luke Allen. For the 
Bachelor of Arts in Psychology, Angel Smith. For the Bachelor of Music in Worship Leadership, Violet Knight. One other that we'd like to present, and that is our Excellence in Preaching Award, and I'd like to ask our winner for this year to come forward, if he would. If you were in chapel yesterday, you heard him. I know Luke's got my back. There he is. Yeah, I'm right here. Good, good. The certificate reads, the Baptist College of Florida Presidential Excellence in Preaching Award presented to Luke Allen in recognition of outstanding achievement in sermon preparation and delivery and in recognition of superior potential for service to our Lord Jesus Christ through the preaching ministry. Presented this 29th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2022, Thomas A. Kenson, President. Luke. God bless you, my brother, yes, sir. and uh, proud of you, proud for you, and we desperately need men who will preach the gospel, Absolutely. and uh, our prayer is that you will do exactly that. Here we have a preaching Bible. You don't really, you need a lot of other study aids, but as far as material for preaching, you got more than enough right here. And God bless you and go share it unapologetically. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you. <laughs> and so it's Honors Day. You know, we live in a society where they want to say that you either honor everybody or you don't honor anybody. I think we can take that too far. And so I was studying and thinking about what is honorable ministry? Well, you know, all ministry, if it is truly ministry, begun by a call from God and sustained by a continuing call from God is honorable and should be celebrated. And everyone who has come here has signed as a part of their application process that they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and have given all that they are and have for all that he desires to do in and through them. That's an honorable statement. And anyone who stays here and graduates is worthy of honor. And especially when they go out and pursue that. But as I looked at what constitutes an honorable call, I, I prayed about it and felt the Lord leading me to Acts chapter 3. And if you have your copy of Scripture, I find myself when I'm in chapel or in church now, I usually have it on my phone. I remember the first time that I was speaking and someone took out their phone and I just wanted to go over and slap them, playing with their phone while I was preaching. Little did I know they had the scripture on the phone. Uh, my ignorance led to my just being infuriated. And so I, I learned something then. Don't work off of your ignorance. Wait until you learn about your ignorance and try to correct it. So if you got it on your phone, uh, whatever, just turn your phone to, to vibrate. And if you've got a pacemaker, turn it off. We're not going to be here that long. <laughs> Acts chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. 
As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg for the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Naz the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar they had so often seen at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. What is honorable ministry? How do we find it? What constitutes it? How do we practice it and celebrate it? First of all, the opportunities for honorable ministry are closer than we sometimes expect them to be. I run into a lot of people who um, are in planning mode, mission planning mode, it seems to be. Well, what are you doing now? Well, I'm planning for when I go on mission. I'm planning for when I get on the field of service. I'm planning. Well, what constitutes that for usually it's somewhere else geographically? Uh, usually it's somewhere else uh, that uh, you have your mind set on. We spend so much time planning on where God's going to put us later that we often miss the opportunity of service where God has us now. If you come here thinking that this is a four-year time out, you have missed the boat for why God's got you here. This is not training that you put in the spiritual freezer and take it out after graduation. It works now. You don't have to have a diploma for it to work as you see the people. The people are right by the gate. The people are right outside the doors. The people are right out there on College Drive or on 12th Avenue or on Sanders. They're right here in Graceville. You don't have to go on a mission trip. Now, don't mishear me. Going on a mission trip is a wonderful thing, but it can also be a terrible thing if you go on a mission trip to Mogahobali and you get so inspired that you think you don't need math and English and all the good things that you need to learn back here. And so you just drop out and drop by and one day find out that you really did need all of that. Who are you going to call? So let me encourage you. Go, get those experiences. But realize that they are more building blocks. The people who need your honorable ministry are closer than you think. Some of them are in your house. Many of them are in your family. They have wrong priorities sometimes. This man had wrong priorities. What did he want? He wanted just enough to get by that day. He knew he'd be back the next day. So all he was really looking for is enough to get by that day. And a lot of the people with whom you and I have contact today want just enough to get by today. A lot of the folks we see at the exit ramp on the interstate who have a sign, food wanted, food needed. The other day I was getting off at I-75 in US-27 at Ocala. A man was standing there, and he said, I need food. 
Didn't say I need money. I looked over and I had a bag that had about four different kinds of snack food in it. I don't know how it had lasted that long with unopened snack food. I was the only man in the car. I was the only person in the car. If Ruth hadn't been in the car, you could have explained it not being open. But I was there by myself, unsupervised, and it still wasn't open. And so I reached over there and I took that bag and I handed it to him. And he was both surprised and a little disappointed, I think. I think he was expecting cash. But I gave him food. This man at the temple wanted just enough to get by. He didn't expect more. And that's what a lot of folks with whom we have contact in our ministry are looking for. Just to get by. They're not expecting a miracle. They're just expecting one more day. One more day. And let me ask you, is that what you and I are expecting in our walk with the Lord? Or do we have full expectation of a miracle today? A miracle any day that we have the privilege of walking with him. He must have been terribly excited when Peter said, look at us. He had had folks say something like that before, I'm sure, right before they were going to give him a big gift because they wanted everybody to see them give him a big gift. So he must have been right on top of the roller coaster emotionally. Yeah, I'm going to probably make enough to make it through the day and I can go back home. And so he was full of expectation. Then what happened? The bottom fell out. Peter said, I don't have what you want. And a lot of people are going to want you to change your ministry to what they want and what they expect. And a lot of times you're going to be tempted to change your ministry. If you're serving in a local church, they're going to be some highly influential, highly financially fixed people who without saying it are going to say to you, if you will agree with me and follow my desires in this church, things are going to go real well for you. But there might be some times when their desire is not where God is leading you and not what God has called you to do. What are you going to do then? They will be expecting you to change your ministry to their leadership. That is not honorable ministry. Changing our ministry every time the crowd changes their desire. The desire of the crowd does not constitute our calling. The will of God constitutes our calling. And so, the man had to be downcast. He was disappointed with deliverance. Do you ever get disappointed with where God's leading you? What he's asking you to do? I just say, I never get disappointed with God. I just get poochy mouth with him. You ever get that way? Get your lips stuck out with God? Sure you do. You're not as pious as you're looking this morning. I'm so glad he's so forgiving. I'm so very glad. But... What Peter said was, I don't have what you want, but what I have, I'm more than willing to give. Therein, therein is honor. What I have been given, I will give. And folks, if we can can keep that in our heart, in our head, on our lips, what I have been given, I will give. Grace and peace I will give 
No, don't neglect the physical needs. There's been a running battle between social gospel and gospel gospel. It was especially hot in the early 20th century and fires up every once in a while. There's no honor in standing and sharing the gospel and letting somebody starve to death while you're watching them. But there's also less honor in having someone fat and happy and going to hell because you didn't tell them about Jesus. It's not either or, folks. It's both and. That's honorable ministry. It's both and. What God has given to you, give away. And just remember, wherever you're going today, even if you're going all the way into Alabama or Georgia, there's a beggar at the gate. Will your response be honorable ministry? Now I'm going to lead us in prayer. And I'm going to multitask. I'm multitasking to dismiss this meeting, but also to give thanks to God for the food that has been prepared for our graduates and their families. Because I know some of you, and you dare not risk eating unblessed food. And so, uh, no, we don't want you to have to wait. It'll be over in the Wellness Center, and uh, we'll be waiting for you and looking forward to have that fellowship. God bless you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you. Lord, thank you for reminding us that the beggars are at the gate. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that Peter and John would not have seen them if they had not been faithful and attention to your word and your worship and father thank you that they were faithful and holding on to and giving away that which you had given to them and also to taking care of the needs of those around them dear god bless us today as we celebrate these who will be graduating and dear God, bless their families. Keep them safe as they travel. Heavenly Father, please bless the food that we'll be sharing. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you and have a great day.